Welcome to episode 281. You're listening to Escaping the REI Newbie Zone podcast, where you'll learn the underground, closely guarded secrets that will revolutionize your real estate business. This podcast is all about helping you exit the real estate newbie zone and enter financial freedom, building up your real estate throne. This is Escaping the REI Newbie Zone podcast. And now your host, real estate investor, entrepreneur, world traveler, and nationwide mentor, Chris Bruce. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode. Uh, before we get into today's episode, I want to tell you um, thank you from the really bottom of my heart. I really enjoy hearing um, all of you guys' feedback of how you've been enjoying the podcast. You've been reaching out to me on Facebook, and Instagram, um, and I really appreciate you uh, letting me know how much the podcast content uh, interviews have changed your life, have gave you new perspective. And, you know, I gave you exact steps of what to do to go out there and crush it in real estate. Well, today um, episode, I actually have an interview um, coming up and it is about um, a guy that has really um, been able to go through all different types of real estate as far as transactions, like on the wholesale side, on the rehab side, on the uh, asset protection side on, you know, uh, getting apartment deals, multifamily. And at some point, you know, with maturity, with your age, it's time to mature in your career. OK. And this man that I'm about to bring on has done that. He's been on every aspect of the transaction when it comes to real estate. And he actually talks about um, they're taking down uh, 88 uh, unit apartment building, um, which is huge news. So just to hear about his journey it's very inspiring, and um, I believe that you're going to really enjoy uh, this episode. All right, so before I get into it, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. You can do this. We are on every platform you can think of, Stitcher, uh, Google Play, iTunes, of course. Um, tune in as well. Uh, make sure you subscribe, and also, please, if you can, all right, which I know you can, please, if you have not done already, leave us an honest review. Let us know how we're doing. Um, because this helps push us up in the rankings as well. All right, so let me go ahead and wait no further and get into my special guest interview for today, my man, Larry Buckner. All right, how you doing, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Escaping the REI Newbie Zone. I'm your host. Uh, like I said on the intro, guys, we have a very uh, special guest today, and um, we're going to be talking about some things that we haven't really covered much on podcast we talked a lot about single family uh, properties but today we're going to be focusing on multi-family all right so let me go ahead and welcome on my guest larry buckner how you doing larry doing well chris how are you doing great man i'm um, glad to get you on the podcast awesome glad to be here all right so larry um you've been on an incredible journey uh, you've had uh, tons of experience with all type of real estate. Bring us back to day one. When's the first time you really entered into this game of real estate? <sighs> wow, man. Um, uh, back in Michigan, for sure. I, I think the last time we spoke, uh, I had told you my parents, uh, they, they've been in real estate for a long time. And, you know, my mom's had her license when she was almost my age. She was 25 years old. So she's been a broker for a long time. And she got into investing, um, you know, not too long after she she got her license. And so my dad is an experienced contractor as well. So he he's a licensed builder in Michigan. And so the two of them, they had been investing for a long time. And so I, I sort of fell into the family business. Gotcha. Um, you know, I can remember, you know, being a teenager and, and really assisting them with their flips, you know, just like little stuff, you know, little sweat equity, you know, yep. grab a hand, you know, start, start paying, painting a couple of walls. So. You know, they would actually, they actually did pay me um, sometimes when I helped them out. And so I really got to learn a lot and just watching them and then just learning, learning about real estate through them, honestly. I mean, especially from the brokering side. I mean, my mom, she's, she's been in real estate for such a long time and has been so successful at it. Gotcha. Okay. You know, I, it really started when I was, you know, probably around 17. Wow. <laughs> I, I got to do all that. So it's been, 
heck of a journey. It's so it's so surreal thinking, you know, how long ago that was <laughs> now yeah. and, and just looking at now. So Got you. Okay. All right. So um seeing the success that your parents were having, um did you naturally uh like was it like high school where you was like, Okay, I'm gonna get into this or did you wait till like after? Like what would it what kinda like what was the progression of of you getting into it heavy for yourself i actually i actually didn't start doing it heavy for myself at that age i i kind of waited okay i i took more of the more of that academic route where i was like okay you know especially from the development side you know from from my dad's side you know because i was really interested in that and just gotcha. project management and so i had i had actually went to college and got an engineering degree and from there, I had a full time. I had a full time job with a uh, Fortune 500 company, and I was, and I was essentially doing large scale capex projects. You know, project managing those, seeing what really went into, you know, a multi million dollar project. And so that experience was invaluable because now you talk about you know knowing how to handle um, projects of that scale, especially when you're talking about multi family, right, you know, right, asset management. So and that experience was valuable because you know I did that nationally, so I would get. I, I would fly out to certain cities and, and man, manage these large capex projects, and fly back, you know, fly to Georgia, Philadelphia, and, and all these and all these different cities. And I just really started to leverage that experience, and really, and that gave me the confidence to essentially go and do it on my own, on the side, um, in, in the single family space. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah, I, I can see that. You know, um, I mean that that's. Having that 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 experience is invaluable, you know. And plus, it's not really on your dime. <laughs> in the sense, you know, you exactly. have to go <laughs> go spend tons of money learning from someone. Like, you got paid to do that. That's that's pretty nice, man. Yeah. So, okay. So fast forward. Um, you got this experience now. Um, did you get into? Uh, like buying holds or fixing flips like what was that next like transition you know with the experience that you took on i honestly eased into it my so the first step was um was actually just wholesaling and okay. really concentrating on on transactions on the single family side you know just that transaction of the contract room because I, I really want I'm like eh, i don't want to put so much liability into right. flips like i, I want to see you know what i can learn before getting in getting into that and i got my own license i started you know, on the brokerage side as well. So, you know, I'm kind of doing it both. I'm doing the investing and I'm brokering as well. Gotcha. So it's like, so then I kind of graduated onto those next steps. Typical to what I feel like most investors, um, that typical path they go through, you know, they start off wholesaling, right? And yep, yep. then eventually they, they get into flips and then, then they get into buy and holds and then, and then they say, oh, wow, you know, I have all these properties, but I can do this for multifamily. And I feel like that's just the, natural progression it seems I could, yeah. I could be wrong yeah yep. it's just it's levels to this <laughs> so you gotta yeah right every level you get up to and say it and, and, and I'm sure naturally when you're developing you know those bigger projects the one thing I would say that I'm pretty sure you had an advantage over a lot of people is having that mindset of thinking bigger you know so absolutely you, because there's so many people that they're not fortunate to have parents that, you know, are teaching them the ways of the wealthy, you know what I mean? And, and, and some of them, they can't even, they've never even been out their neighborhood, so they can't think, you know, uh, bigger than what they see around, you know, on an everyday basis. So um, I'm pretty sure that was a huge advantage. I, I, I had some of that advantage on my side as well, too, on my dad's side. Um, so I, I, I know, can you speak on that, like, just those things of just seeing the success and maybe even some of the conversations that you may have had when you were younger that really just helped you to think bigger all the time. Oh man, it's just, it's, it's so funny you mentioned that because honestly for me, I felt like I've just always thought that way, you know, as far I've always <laughs> thought of buying, like, you know, big projects and doing the next big thing. And it's so funny because, you know, I was never really, I was never really satisfied when I was, you know, in corporate America. You know, I, I would literally get promoted really fast, right? And then I'm like, okay, I, I I get to that next next spot, and I'm like, three months from then, I'm thinking about the next. Okay, what's next? What's right. higher than? What's higher? I'm like, it still isn't big enough. And so, like, that's how I knew. Like, it, it was just never big enough. 
I'm like, how can I do this and not do this in, in, and do it for a company for forty plus years? Yeah, you know, making making this amount. And you're like, I, I want to, I want to be bigger. I want to be better. Like, how how does that happen? I just kept asking myself, how, right? And then that kind of just made me transition into, you know, being an owner and invest in investing in myself or like or leveraging and partnering with people who had experience who had the same vision that I had who also thought big. Right. You know, why you know, why why do that for a company? You know, why why not be an owner? I you know, I would I would literally be one of the people sitting in my apartment complex, you know, in college. And I, this is why I ask people, I'm like, do you ever wonder how much the owner of your apartment complex makes? I always thought I'm like, I'm I'm paying this <laughs> month. Every month, and I know my next door neighbor is, and the rest of the 500 units that are in this place. I'm like, huh? How much does this guy make? I, I just always thought that. Uh. it's always been the big thought. Wow, and, and it's amazing because a lot of people don't think about that. Nope, it just it's like an afterthought to them. afterthoughts to them where they don't think about it at all. They just up, oh, they just pay their rent. All right, move on. Exactly, exactly. That that is so true. So, okay, so thinking bigger obviously led you to start taking action into getting into the multifamily space. So, challenges. Um, what were some of the challenges that you faced moving into this space, you know, of going from single family to multifamily? It was experience. Experience and deal. Because, you know, I, of course, when you just start starting out, it's hard to, it's hard to really get that first project, you know, get that first deal because right. I mean, especially when you're talking about doing the way we do it and getting the capital, how are you going to get the money to do that? Right. You're talking you're talking millions of dollars, you know, 5, 10, 15 million dollars. Like, great. This sounds excellent, right? You know the benefits of multifamily, you know it's big enough. Do you have 10 million dollars to buy a property right now? No. Shoot. Well, how do I solve that problem? I don't have the experience of investing in multifamily. What experience do I have in the multifamily space that I can leverage with somebody else to take down the asset, right? Gotcha. So it's just, it's just all about, it's not about what you don't have. I would say it's more about how can you leverage what you do have. Maybe you're really good at finding deals. You know, maybe you're good at underwriting. Maybe you, you do have access to people who have money, right? And so maybe you can team up with other people who kind of make up for what you lack. Mm, I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I always tell people, listen, be resourceful. You, you know, you'd be surprised of the things that you do have and the resources that you can be to somebody else. And that can end up, you know, making a transaction, making money, making something happen. So I like that. I like that advice. Okay, so fast forward. Um, now, you are... Um, it's big news. I, I know you have, and we're going to talk about this in a minute. You, you, you're getting ready to take down an 88 unit. Is that correct? That's correct. It's, it's a it's a great redevelopment project that has tremendous upside. Hmm. Uh, 88 units up in Tallahassee. Uh, we've been working on that deal for a couple months now, and so you know we're we're still we're still you know progressing to close, but. It's been one heck of a journey. Um, I'm excited about it. I know my business partners are TJ, Demetrius. They're just as excited as I am, and, and as far as just closing on it and, and really capitalizing on all the hard work we put into it, really just getting the ball rolling. Absolutely. And TJ Hines is a good friend of mine. And I want to, you know, kind of hone in a little bit on that. So, how did you guys meet, and what does your partnership with him pretty much look like? So we actually met at um, the meet at his meetup. He has a uh, multifamily apartment investing meetup, and so this is what I was referring to when when I when I said you know meet someone who has the same mindset that you do. So we thought the same thing. You know, here, here's somebody TJ. You know, he's he's been in the game a long time. Right. You know, flipping properties essentially the same progression that that we all had. Right. right? And so he he's so, he's someone who recognized that as well. And it really started just, you know, passionately advocating for multifamily. And, you know, I agreed with that. And so he and I got together and, you know, we we sort of formed our partnership because I knew I knew the advantage, the advantage I had, you know, what what can I, you know, to bring value 
to the team and what, what can he do to bring value to me? And so that, that's how teams form. We're all compensating for what the other person lacks, you know, bringing our own skills to the table. Okay. And so with my experience, you know, in large scale process and large scale projects and just knowing numbers very well and underwriting and, and acquisitions and relationships with brokers, that was really my, my, my essentially my advantage going into that partnership. Gotcha. Gotcha. Man, that's crazy that you met at a meetup. (laughs) <laughs> the power yeah, of, yeah. Of, he, of and he's been, you know, he's had that meetup for a while now. It's it's growing heavily. Yeah. Um, you know, so it, you know, so many people come to that meetup now. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's amazing, man. That is amazing. Um, yeah, me and TJ, we did a meetup back in the day where we were teaching people how to, you know, just do wholesaling. But he's always had a passion for that, and I, I always knew that, you know, he would continue on even after we stopped ours. I'm glad he transition into multifamily so okay so it's you tj um obviously like what what is there any partner any other partners in 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 the the uh the business for your multifamily like what does the team look like i, I just want to give a person a visual of what components has to come together to be able to get to the point to take down the 88 unit yeah yeah sure thing so we're we're a three-man team so it's uh myself TJ and Demetrius, and Demetrius has been also, also involved in real estate for a long time. You know, he, he has experience uh, being a landlord, and so he definitely has the buy, you know, buy and hold portfolio, and so that, that experience is definitely valuable. Gotcha. You know, as far as what we're trying to do, you know, we definitely take insight as far as what he has to offer. Right. And so that, that combination of, you know, the underwriting, the broker relationships, the you know the asset management, and then you know the experience of being a landlord and just being someone who can att- attract more people. You know, Demetrius has a very outgoing demeanor, and he's he's so relatable, and people gravitate to that. And so you can't put a price on that. Nope. That's that's just, that's so that's so valuable. And so it's it's just a great combination, a great team all gotcha. together. Absolutely, absolutely, and of course, I know you have, you guys have had to go out there and raise money as well. Um, but I'm pretty sure that, not saying that's the easy part, but when you have a great group of guys that are all on the same accord, and you have obviously a good asset, it just makes it for that much easier for you, you know, to be able to, I'm sure, find these different people to invest with you guys. Absolutely. That's great. That's great. That's great. Okay. So, um, you guys, get ready to take down this 88 unit. You've been on the grind for a while. Um, obviously, what, what, well, before I get into that, one thing I like that you guys doing that's different is that some people, when they're looking for multifamily units, they will look for a property that is already and in, 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 it's it's more like instead of a value add play, it's more of a distress. Right, 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 right. So yeah. I like I, I I like that you guys took a different approach to it. You say, oh, listen, I'm not gonna go to you know a crappy apartment building, right? That 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 is in a bad neighborhood, and you know we're just gonna try to flip something. You guys are looking more, you know, in something that's different. As far as how can we add value a little bit more and up the prices. Is that correct? Correct. No, 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 that that's definitely correct. And and to that point, you know, again, when you're especially when you're talking about raising capital, you know, as an investor, would you be comfortable putting your money into a deal that was not in a good area? You know, that really didn't have have the metrics that that said it would appreciate over time, or you know, where people aren't going, that people are flocking that area, right? right. They're leaving. And so it's all about just mitigating as much risk as possible for the investors who are putting their hard-earned money into, you know, into, into us. You know, they're trusting us for their capital, you know, to give them the returns that they're looking for. Yeah. Got you. Got you. And that's, you're right. And, and a good thing, guys, I want you to understand, everybody's listening to this podcast that, you know, some of you may be saying, well, well how can I go raise money or how can I do this or what is it? Listen. It will make sense if the numbers work out. It would make sense for 
an investor to put their money and invest with you because the returns that you're they're gonna get is definitely way more than the bank is gonna give them. You know, so somebody that has you know a hundred thousand dollars sitting around or a five hundred thousand, a million, two million sitting in the bank is making you know less than two percent, one percent, whatever. It'll be more you know profitable for them to invest into an asset that is going to make them a longer return over time. So I just want you guys to know that, that, you know, it may seem far-fetched, but this is happening every day. <laughs> Larry's proof of it. <laughs> and every month. The rents, those rents are paid every month. Exactly, exactly. So, um, far as, uh, let, let's let's talk a little bit about this deal, just, just a little bit, like the challenges of this. What has kind of been the biggest like one, if you were to just say one challenge, or even if you want to do two, what has been the biggest challenge with this particular deal here? Because I know you told me that this is a, a very um, unique deal. It's not the, the, the cookie cutter, maybe apartment building that some people may have got into. It's a unique situation. I would say one of the challenges is just, you know, getting all the right parties involved. You know, when you talk about the close, it seems like the closer you get, the closer you get to close, or even to the contract, you know, so many people become involved, right? You know, you have SEC attorneys, and the legal piece is so huge that you really have to think about and make sure you're structuring everything the right way. You know, you, you know, you have to go back and forth with the sales attorney, with the brokers, you know, trying to get the lend, you know, the lenders going back with the mortgage brokers, and it seems like so many people get involved. And you just really have to make sure everything is aligned because if one of those pieces goes wrong, everything like the whole deal can fall apart. Gotcha. And so that that's it's that is definitely a challenging part, you know, making sure that all of those pieces are lined up to ensure a successful closing. Gotcha, gotcha. So there's just a lot of moving pieces, but the reward is so sweet. So <laughs> Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's worth Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It's worth it. All right. So I definitely want to congratulate you, you know, for you guys getting ready to get to that finish line. Um, but I want to also, you know, uh, put it out there that I know you guys are still looking. You're looking for more, more deals, more. So kind of give us, you know, for anybody that's listening, what is the criteria that you're looking for it, to take down another uh, multifamily unit? So the typical properties we look for, we look for um, properties that have 40 units and up. And as far as cap rate goes, we generally like to buy no lower than a six cap. And the, and the properties that we take down, you know, again, they, these have to be in emerging markets or really, really stable areas. So class B, class A areas, you know, we'll take down the asset that's, that's a C plus property in, in, in a B area, as long as you're trading up in value in that area. That makes sense. Oh yeah. And then as far as price per door goes, we look for properties. We look to purchase properties no more than one hundred thousand. Got gotcha. you. Perfect. Okay. All right. So guys, anybody that's listening, um, if you happen to come across an asset, a multifamily unit, and you don't know what the heck you're doing, <laughs> uh, or even if you want to try to wholesale it out or whatever, I don't know. But if you do come across something and it fits this criteria you definitely want to get in touch with Larry. So Larry, is there any way if someone happened to have something that may want to send your way possibly and make sure you guys are not a joker broker, okay? You don't have any time for the, in the waste. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> how can they get in contact with you? Sure. Well, my email is Larry at the value cap .com. I am always on it. I respond to it very quickly. It's, everything usually flows through there. <laughs> Gotcha. It's like you know, I'm I'm always I'm always checking email. There's always something coming through, and I'm and I'm very responsive. And you know, the rest of, and our team is just so we we support collaboration. So we're we're definitely open to joint ventures. And just anyone who who wants education or you know wants to partner with us in any way, we're we're just we're all about collaboration. So perfect. Feel free to reach out to me. I love I love talking about multifamily and just how how can we help you. Perfect, perfect. And guys, I'm going to make sure I include um, the email address uh, link to it inside the show notes of this episode. So that way, you know, like I said, you have some real deals you want to, you know, talk about, you know, maybe even get into multifamily. Um, you can definitely reach out to Larry. So we'll include that as well. All right. So um, 
Larry, what's 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 next? Is it just getting this closed, looking for new new deals? Yes, any any other new projects you guys are working on? Well, actually, once we close, now the fun part begins, right? Now we have to talk about you know what happens post acquisition. Like, right, all right, right, we we have the property. Now what? Now now that. Now that uh, construction begins, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, the real fun. That, that's a whole nother, a whole nother beast um, to really get into. But essentially, once one, once we close on the property and we we have our our game plan in there, we essentially will look to the next property and we, you know we want to scale out and keep it going. Gotcha, perfect, 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 perfect. All right, well, I definitely, like I said, Larry, I want to congratulate you guys. I know you've been working hard, and Thank um, you. you know this is a big win. Uh, for you guys, so I'm definitely proud. Of you. I have to go up there and check out your apartment building when everything is, is is done and finished. Yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right. So, um, any last words for encouraging words you want to give to our listeners that you know are thinking about doing a transition and, and thinking about getting a multi-family, but you know they just don't really know where to start or what to do. I would say. Just don't don't self, don't have self limiting beliefs. You know, it's all about don't don't think about what you lack. Think about what you have, and don't be afraid to partner up with people who have experience and put a little sweat equity in. You know that that's a really good way to get into the game. You know, just partnering up with more experienced people who are doing the things that you want to do. Absolutely, I love it. Great advice. All right, guys. Um, again, I'm going to include the email address in the show notes. I know you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to at me on Instagram and on the, your story at Detroit Mogul, and I will go ahead and repost it. But you guys know my quote: "Don't live to dream, live your dream." I'll see you on the next episode. Amen to that. Thanks for listening to Escaping the REI Newbie Zone podcast at www.escapethenewbiezone.com.